Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. You might remember a few weeks ago I picked up an ICMI deposit safe and it had this Lagarde safe lock on it. Originally I thought, well maybe I'll just replace it because I thought it was looking a bit shabby. But when I had a closer look it looked like it was in good condition, there was really nothing wrong with it apart from the stickers on the outside. So I sent it back to the local dealer for Lagarde in Australia and they were able to re-zap it for me. So now I have a working safe lock. After going over the figures and the features and things, it seems that I've probably dudded myself and I could have got a few more features enabled while I was getting it reset. So I'll take you through all the features and all the specs that I could find on it uh, for reference and how to do a few things. And um, yeah, so for starters with, I tried to look for this particular safe model and uh, what I was looking up was the number uh, here, 4300M model number. Now that's the model of the actual lock but it's not really the model to make of the series. The series I found most information under was 39E and although it, I can't really see it there, it should be there probably somewhere and this is a class B, B lock. So this number here, 3400M, refers to the actual type of lock it is. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, cut a long story short, it's working now and the lock is working. So I could put that straight back on a safe and I'll be able to change my codes and things and I could get going. But being a locksmith, I want to look at it and see exactly what's in it. So I found this model under 39E and there's two types of programming you can do via the keypad where you beep, 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 beep uh, with your manager or master code and then you can add or delete codes. I'll go into that more. Or you can actually plug in a little plug, I believe, just down here on the back, plug in with software. I don't have the software and I didn't really want to purchase it just for this one lock and we don't do enough of them so I didn't buy the software. Uh, the keypad has, it's a soft keypad with dome membrane keypad, whatever that means, or part thereof. Okay, uh, the locking action on the actual lock itself, they come in different configurations. This is what we call a swing bolt because when it's actually released, this bolt here can actually retract back. Let's see if I can show you that. See that? How it moves down? That's a swing bolt. The other way is it can protrude out and go back into its casing. So what they call them is dead bolt, swing bolt, spring bolt, and redundant locking system. So there's just a couple of different types that, that there are. For the actual shape of the keypad, and I've got a little printout here for you because I don't have the full range. There's a couple more of them you can see. These ones have the their clip on the front just like this one here. See those two lunks? and they also have the battery in the front. Some also have other little like spots like this where you can put in audit keys, the little Dean keys and parts like that. Now this is a Lagarde, but a lot of the parts are stamped also Carba. So I'm not sure who's what or what's where. I believe they're all in configuration. So here's the model we have here. This is the 4300M. Here's another one here. This looks like more of the debolting function and it has those extra little boxes uh, attached to the side. Not too familiar with that one, so we'll move on. The next one here is the dead bolt function one as well. Um, so that one, basically the bolt protrudes. It's a solid bolt like we've all seen on all the safe locks. This one here is an extra battery pack. So you can give your safe a little bit more life. Um, or there might be some models that actually have the battery inside the safe, not too sure. This little black box was very interesting because it does a number of features such as silent alarm, um, disable opening, all sorts of things like this, but I wasn't able to um, actually get that, and because I don't really need it, I didn't really want to spend a couple of hundred dollars to get it. Okay, so just before we go on, I was able to find a picture of the alarm interface, and that's it there. It even comes with the wiring diagram on the, on the lid, which is very interesting. And when I look at the actual wiring diagram itself, it's not that bad. You can see it there. So we've got the bolt. The first uh, connection there is the bolt, normally closed, normally closed, um, and then bolt C, C, and uh, then we've got bolt normally open. So there's a couple of different circuits you can run off there. Uh, we've got a tamper circuit, a door circuit, an R4, is that some sort of resistance? I would say it might be. Uh, we've also got some little speaker here, what's that say? Uh, blocking signal, and then alarm contact, normally closed alarm contact. So, I mean, that looks pretty simple just to work out. So, it doesn't look too intimidating to actually connect. Uh, you'd need to run a cable through your safe, but with a couple of different circuits, you can actually um, hook all these up. I'm not exactly sure how many circuits you'd want. Uh, alarm normally closed, that's one. Uh, so, if that was hooked up, basically, when the lock is moved, it would open that circuit, tr triggering the alarm. Then you have your door one there, so that's interesting to know which one's actually doing which. 
A tamp is interesting as well, and considering you've got the wires there, I don't think it would take too much to actually wire up. Each one of these circuits is probably just two wires with a resistor, uh, so you could say maybe you'd run four, five or six pairs, so 12, 12 cables in there, sorry, 12, um, 12 wires in there. So not, not that hard to hook up, but interesting all the same, and for a lot of people, I, I believe this box would definitely give them a lot more functionality. I mean, for me, I wouldn't worry about all these, but I do like the fact that it's got alarm, you know, even just for the smallest of safes anywhere, um, the alarm option of adding, or well, being able to connect your safe to your alarm system um, really does give you that next level of security, especially if you've got a monitored alarm. So I guess all these functions here are only really if you've got a monitored alarm system and you want to run it back through that or some other type of notification system. So that's the uh, box there. That's the wiring diagram for it. And that's what it looks like. Okay, let's move back on to programming. All right, so the features on this particular uh, model here, uh, that's what I was saying, it's, it's worth looking into because the actual lock is not too bad. The Being a Class B, it's got, it's got quite a lot of features. So first of all, we've got um, a master code, a master reset code, which should be uh, six, should be number five, six times. One, two, three, four, five. And doesn't work. So you can set that master recode. So once your lock has been zapped and reset to factory, you can use that code to allow you to do a master reset. But if you set your manager's code before you do that, before you set that master reset code, you lose the master reset code option. So in our particular circumstance, I'm not sure if it was enabled, but I'm pretty sure we've lost it. So we're down to manager. So we could never do a master reset on this lock. But I'm saying that too, we don't really need to because we're still able to charge, change all the features we want to, uh, the time delay, the um, add and delete users all by a keypad via using the master code. So we don't really need the master reset code. So that's okay because there's not much information as far as after a full reset. We've got a, lot of, uh, we've got a reasonable amount of information I could find on it about how to do the functions, but not so much on how, to, um, you know, after a master reset and all the little functions that um, might be in that. So I couldn't find a cheat sheet, so I'm happy to be at a user level and just operate it that way. So to start off with now, we have a master code and a manager code. Um, I believe I've done 20, 20, 20. That should be my master. And 10, 10, 10 should be my manager. The code length can be anywhere from six to nine digits in combinations, in the combination. You can do an audit up to 63 audit events. Now for that you would need the software to plug in to open the safe up plug in and do that to be able to get that audit information. So you would need software. I haven't done it, I haven't seen it done, I'm just reading basically from the from what it, the specs, so from what it can do. It also has a dual mode and silent alarm op option. Now just getting back to silent alarm option option, you'd need the box. I mean that's not a bad one if if you are getting held up and somebody's got a gun to your head and you've got this thing on time delay and you haven't been able to activate any other alarm, having silent alarm option is good. To activate it, you simply go one number up or down at the end of your user code, and this will actually trigger the silent alarm option. And the way that works is it goes to this box, well, you do it through the keypad, it triggers uh, the contact through this box, and then, then that is wired up to your alarm system, and your alarm system will then see zone 34, for example, come up, and zone 34 being a silent alarm, hold up, panic alarm. And when the alarm company sees that, they then know to send the police out, guns blazing. So it is a good idea because sometimes you just don't have the time to activate an alarm. And if the safe still opens the same way, the burglar would never be the wiser. So I, I like that function. I think it's well worth having, especially on any safe that's got a capability to hold cash above 20,000 because you never know you're luck in the big city. Okay, uh, so yeah, it's a class B. Uh, exit auxiliary power supply which is what, uh, this little box which we saw here this is not needed in this scenario because this is quite a reasonable keypad most of the time you only see one battery this one's got two so that that's going to give it some extra life and some extra juice before it starts to die when it does start to die you'll see it will give you a low battery indicator uh, warning but with ba two batteries like that you should get a fair bit of use out of it that's the other thing I like about it it's it's um, the keypad's bigger and holds more batteries than the, some of the other standard ones I've worked with. So I was quite happy with that. Uh, it's a die cast locking body, this, this one here. Um, it is secured with three screws of M6 in nature. One, two, and three, straight through the lock body, bang, bang, bang. And those screws are fairly standard across the range with a lot of different safes locks, so I don't think you have any troubles tracking them down. Lock operation, as we said, swing bolt and redundant. Now, 
This actual part here can come in right hand, left hand, vertical up, vertical down. This is vertical up, that's vertical down, left hand and right hand, depending on your configuration. And I, I know what you're thinking, oh, you just swing it around and this and that, but sometimes you've, the cable will be coming out in different spots and um, they do operate differently. So you do want to put a left hand on a left hand, not just run it in the upside down configuration because you'd really hate for one of these to fail and they're spring loaded and they've taken everything into account. So if you've got a left handed door, use a left handed lock pretty much. All right, moving on. So this particular model is the 4300M swing bolt. Uh, there's all different types of models, such as the 6040M, which is dead bolt, 6034, which is another spring bolt, uh, 6441, uh, redundant mechanical. Okay, fairly straightforward there, nothing much. Okay, so for the codes on this bad boy, we've got master, super um, master, and we can also get the super master reset if we had done that, we didn't, we lost it. So we've only got a master, a manager. We can have up to nine user codes. In this particular one, I got this return back to me after being flashed and they said uh, user one was enabled. So I'm gonna go through later on and see if I can actually enable some other, of the other users. Particularly, I want user number nine. And I'll tell you why later on. So I can select up to um, nine different users. So if you've got nine users, one manager, that's 10. We should have 11 codes we can sort of go through there. Some of the main functions of this lock, which I believe are great for the safe that it came from, the de uh, deposit safe, is it actually has a time delay. And I'll enable that time delay and, and reset that time delay to show you exactly how that's done. We also have uh, dual code. So I guess that's good if you've got multiple staff. If you're running a business, let's say for example, and you've got a lot of younger staff and you're worried about one of them being a little bit crooked or one of them you know, having access to the safe, perhaps a dual code system might give you that little bit more protection because then it will require two members of staff with their own individual codes to unlock that safe, meaning that the safe at any time when it's opened is under the supervision of two people, not one. So there's a lot more um, responsibility there and one can sort of look after the other to, to make sure nothing funny is going on so dual code I don't see as a bad option I believe it can be used if it's used properly in a you know to an advantage time o time delay override so basically when you put in your code it'll it'll just blink when it starts to beep you bang in your code again and you can un undo it time o time delay override well if you're in a hold-up situation and it's got time delay and you feel they're gonna shoot you in the next five minutes and you can't wait five minutes it's good to have a backup plan and by having a time delay override is definitely definitely worth while having if you're gonna have time delay have a time delay override just in case whether or not you can um, you can you know how do you say um, keep the burglar waiting or keep the person who's doing the hold up waiting or not is really up to the person. If your life's threatened, you don't want to get killed over five minutes. So a time delay override is definitely a good option. To do that option, you need option nine and I'll go through that later on. Activate, deactivate users. Okay, so in this example here, I could with using my master code or my uh, managers, I could actually add and delete codes. So that's a benefit because if you have a staff member leave, you can simply walk up, enter in the uh, sequence, and then remove their code, turn it on, turn it off. So you don't have to get a safe technician out to remove a code when somebody leaves the company. So that's pretty good. Uh, remote disable lock. Now this is interesting. If you find out that something's uh, really wrong with your business or company shop or whatever, and you know you want to disable that, that safe lock, it is a possibility. I believe it's with this box here, this one here, this one that does all the good stuff. So. For example, if uh, let's say it's gone into liquidation or so, and you know they're gonna be trying to take the safe out, or for some reason, a staff member's gone rogue and you wanna just disable that safe, you can do that. Remote disable locking. So that, that's a handy one. Uh, remote disable lock. Sorry, remote disable lock opening. Remote disable lock. Uh, silent alarm code. And um, audit. They're the extra features that you don't normally get with it unless you have that extra box. And the audit, as we said before, you've got to plug in. So that's nothing to do with the box, you've got to plug in. Activation by PC software required. So these are just functions. They probably even charge you per extra function that you need. So once you've got that software, you can do what you like. But if you're doing like I do, send it away and, bring, and get it back. You'll probably get charged a little bit extra the more you want, which is understandable. Uh, battery box with alarm function, separate alarm module, we've gone over that. Now low battery signal, we've gone over that. You're going to uh, see it beep and do different things. Wrong try penalty after four false codes. So basically, the more you, the more wrong codes you put into it, the longer the delays get before you can retry your code. So first of all, you might get uh, four wrong tries, then it'll lock you out for five minutes, and then it'll probably be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and it goes on from there. 
LED with beeper function indicated. That's that little dot here. See it? The LED is the light and the beeper function is the little audible tone. Pretty straightforward. Okay, setting up with software, we don't have the software to do any of that sort of stuff. So we've gone over all the different versions. All right, so let's let's get into programming. Okay, so the first bit of programming we're going to do is the most basic step and the one that's probably used the most. Now, I've set this up with two codes here. So one should be the master and one should be the manager. So if I want to change one of these codes, let's start off with the 10, 10, 10. All I'd need to do is push the zero key six times. Now I would enter in my old number, which is 10, 10, 10, two beeps to confirm. Now I enter it in one more time. And we got three beeps, which means I've done it completely wrong. Okay, let's walk through this again. Six beeps, and now I've six, six zeros, and I get two beeps confirmation, the light's on solid. I put in my current code, two beeps to audio. Now here's the step that I did wrong. I actually have to put in my new code, and I have to put it in two times. So in this example now, I'm going to go 50, 50, 50, two beeps, and it's confirmed. 50, 50, 50, and it's confirmed. So instead of this being uh, 111, now we've got it as a 5, 5, 5. Okay. Now with the door open, we go through and we check it. 50, 50, 50. And click. And it's unlocked. So that's how to change the, the, the master, the user, and the manager. So just to prove it, we'll do the 20, 20, 20 as well. Six zeros. Light goes on. Enter in the current code, 20, 20, 20. Enter in the new code. Now I'm just gonna go uh, one, 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 three, three, three. Confirm my code, one, 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 three, three, three. So write it down. Okay, now we test it. With the door open. And the lock is functioning. Okay, so that's how to change the codes. Okay, so th in this bit of programming, we're going to add an, or activate another user. So we're going to see if that can be done. On the software, I was told it's uh, position one has only been activated, so it might actually kick us out, but the theory remains the same. So we have to start off with our master code. In this example, we've got it as 50, 50, 50, so let's try that. On the last digit, we're going to hold it down. So this is my last digit, I'm going to hold it down longer. I've got two beeps, and if I release my finger, it should stay on. Okay. Now, I'm going to go uh, position one, and it three beat me out, which means 50, 50, 50 is our manager's code, not our master code. Let's try that again. One, two, three, and now three, three, and holding down the three, two beeps, the light stays on. Now we're going to go to uh, number one for users, two beeps, that's good, and we're going to try and activate number three, three beeps, that's bad. Perhaps we've only got um, user one enabled, so we should probably try user two before we try user three. Okay, so let's go back over our must code, which is triple one, triple three. Holding down the last one, letting go once it gives us that confirmation beep. Number one for users, let's go position two, and we got we got two beeps as well. So, in this example, what really should be happening if those user positions were enabled is we put in our master code, which is triple one, triple three, holding down the last digit, waiting for the light to come on. Once the light comes on, we go position one for users, and then after that, we select the user position from one to nine, and then from there, we enter in our code, confirm our code, and we should have a new user. Because this lock has only been set up with one user code, I can't, I can't demonstrate it, but that's, that's the theory behind it. Okay, another very useful command is turning off a user code. In this example, we've got one user code in there, so we're going to turn off the 50, 50, 50 number, and let's do that. So we enter in our mask code, which is triple one, triple three, holding down the last digit, wait for it to beep. Okay, now to disable, we press number two, enter in the user number which we wish to disable, which is user number one, which is this code here, and we're done. So now we're going to give it just a few seconds and we're going to try our 50 50 50 code. Nothing happened. Now let's turn it back on. Mask code, which is triple one, 
triple three, holding down the last digit. Now we're going to push number one. Now we enter in the user number, number one, and we've re-enabled it. Let's test it. Give it a few seconds. 50, 50, 50. And we've re-enabled it. So that's disable and re-enabling your user. But you do have to know which user position you want to disable. Okay, now we're going to disable a user. Now this is a bit tricky because I hope I don't lose my user. So to disable a user, we do it the same method. We do our must code, which is triple one, triple three, holding down the last digit. And we push number three, and we select the desired user we wish to disable. In this example, it's user one of 50, 50, 50. So I push uh, user one. I've got two beat confirmation. And let's try that after giving it a few seconds. 50, 50, 50 doesn't work so we have uh, sorry we've deleted user so let's go back now to adding that user so one 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 three three holding down the last one number one to add a user uh, user number one now we enter in our code again 50 50 50 two beeps confirm it 50 50 50 Okay, we should be good. Giving it a few seconds. Let's try our code. 50, 50, 50. And we're unlocked. So what we did there was we deleted a user. Then we went back, we added the user and set the code. And um, it's back in operation. So if you've got somebody on staff and you basically just want to delete them, you can do it. If you've got the master code, it should be as simple as looking over the codes, see which user position you want to knock out, and you can just simply knock it out and you can turn it back on and reset it when you want. Okay, auditing. Now we don't have the audit uh, cable or the software to do so, but I'll give you a quick rundown on how to do that. So basically you enter in the manager's code, 11133, one, three, and hold down that last digit to hear the beep. Now you would push uh, seven, and once this is complete, you would then hook in your PC and you'd be able to get an audit uh, trail of who's used it. Up to 63 uses, probably not, uh, you know, probably 61, 62 if you've pushed the buttons a few times. But you would need that extra box to connect into it. Since we don't have it, we can't do it. But that's how that function goes. And that's uh, for basically function seven. Okay, so here's a very interesting one how to set the time delay uh, length. Now, at the moment, and I'll just put in my code, it's set to nothing. All right, the lock opens, you can see that. Now, we're gonna set that to um, one minute. I think these are the smallest variable. So to do that, we're gonna put in our master code, which in this example is triple one, triple three, holding down the last digit, waiting for that light to come on, and now it's on. Now we go position nine, two beeps is a good thing. Then we need to enter in the time delay period is in um, two digits. So one zero would be 10, zero one, I think we've just timed out. Zero one, zero one. Okay, we've timed out. Let's try that again. Master code, holding down the last digit. Position nine, two digits for the time delay, zero one. Two more digits for the delay time will stay open, zero five. We've got two beeps. Okay, once we've uh, done that, we should be we should be right to go. Re-enter the delay. Okay, sorry. Just like the pin numbers, we need to re-enter the delay. Let's do that. One, 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 three, three. Hold it down. All right, we're in programming mode. Position number nine. Zero one for one minute. Zero five to hold it open for that. Zero one and zero five to confirm it, and we should be good. Now let's test our code. Five zero five zero five zero. And we should be, yep, we're blinking every uh, every couple of seconds, which means we're actually in time delay now. So we actually have to wait for that time delay to uh, go past that, and then we can enter in our code to unlock it. The delay period will flash once every second. The open period, the LED will flash twice a second, and, and the entry device will beep every 10 seconds. So when it's blinking every uh, twice a second, and making a noise, we can enter in our code. 
The penalty period, um, penalty period, the LED will flash 10 times. So if you enter in your code wrongly four or five times, you'll get a flash every 10 seconds. The low battery warning, uh, will, low battery, the LED will flash and the entry device will beep repetitively. So if you see a lot of flashing, a lot of beeping, time to change your batteries. Okay, here we go. So now we're good. Now we can enter in our code and the lock opens. One other thing to note, if you're using a dual code system, to do any lock changing lock uh, functions, you will need that dual code to get into that programming mode. Um, I'm saying that you can actually do some users here. Uh, all lock functions, you need the two codes, except for changing combinations. Okay, so just well worth noting there. Now let's go through and let's reset that delay down to zero again. We're gonna turn off that time delay period. We will we'll position and put and no, it didn't didn't like that either. For some reason, there is some sort of time delay, and I've had a lot of issues with turning it off. I'm not sure if uh, you need to do it in some sort of order or some sort of delay or something along those lines. What I also have noticed is I was able to turn the time delay off while the lock is actually in time delay mode. So let's basically give that a little bit of a go. One, 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 three, three, three. Okay, now we're in time delay mode. So let's uh, try to get into programming mode. We're in programming mode, position nine. And we should be doing two zeros, another two zeros. And we've got three beeps there. Now, if I try it again, but I try it real slowly, we might actually be able to get that time delay off in that time delay period. Position nine. Now if I go zero, zero, and I give it a few minutes, Zero, zero, and we, it basically threw us out again. I have done it, and that's one of the things I could never quite work out via the instructions or anything of actually what the problem was. Now I'm going to set the opening period for zero 05, and I don't think that worked either. It was still in time delay. It was still in time delay. See if we can nut this out and get this working. So position nine, zero, 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 one. Okay, so that took it then. Zero, 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 one. Okay, now we're still in time delay, but watch this. I'm gonna put in my code. Uh, well, actually, we're out of time delay now. And I just put in a wrong code. Okay, so just before I go, I wanted to clarify something which I actually got wrong and um, from time to time it happens and I know there's probably a couple of safe technicians out there seething right now going no no it doesn't work that way so let me clarify with this time delay okay I'll do it with the door open to set the time delay we go into master code holding down the last last digit we go position nine two beeps two beeps is good three beeps no not so good one beep means okay I got it now we set the time so I'm gonna set it to zero one zero one and it gave me two beeps now I can confirm that time zero one zero one now originally I thought that I actually created a hack or, or found another way around so I'm just gonna try and open the safe now using my code and it's gone into time delay mode the light is blinking and we're waiting for the beeps now originally I thought uh, there was a bit of a workaround to bypass that time delay and um, after half an hour of mucking around with it half an hour of my life I'm not going to get back I've uh, come to the conclusion that no it wasn't a workaround see if I try and reset the time delay now which I found a possibility I'm using the mask code holding down the last digit going position 9 now I'm going to set it to 0, zero, zero 5 and it gave me three beeps now the thing was it would do that three or four times and then eventually it would take and what I've come to the conclusion is is that the amount of times it took me to do that four or five times was the actual time delay and once that time delay had actually timed out allowing the safe to be opened was the only time that the lock would allow me to reset the time delay so originally when I was doing it, I was thinking okay well I've got to do it four or five times before it's going to do it but it's actually now the time delay has actually expired watch this zero one zero one our master code put it in programming mode by holding the last digit go position nine and set it to four zeros and it took it okay it's still beeping away but now that I've programmed it 
instant. So even though it was in time delay, uh, the remaining section of it, um, the time delay had actually lapsed. So if you've got, I've only set this to one minute as an example, because I'm uh, testing it, mucking around with it. But if I had set that to five minutes, I could have tried that a hundred times and it wouldn't have actually reset the time delay until that five minutes had expired. So that was my uh, mistake because I was actually thinking, why isn't it taking, why isn't it taking, why isn't it taking on the fifth or sixth time it would take? Reason being is because the period had elapsed. So, um, can you work around the time delay if you're in a hold up situation? No. Um, that's why user nine is still worthwhile putting in there so that you can bypass that time delay. I thought you could bypass it by multiple attempts of programming in lockout mode, in time delay mode, and on the fifth or sixth time you get lucky and it takes it, whether or not that was a timing issue or not, is all rubbish. It just didn't. It just would, the only time it would take it was on a fifth or sixth attempt, and that was simply because I was out of my time delay period. So, just to clarify that, because I know some people will be seething saying, no, it doesn't work, and, and perhaps that explained it. It took about half an hour for me to work it out, and uh, now that I've worked it out, that kind of makes good sense, because I thought that if you could program around the time delay, you're bypassing the time delay. So, obviously, these uh, people who come up with this stuff are... Uh, you know they've spent the time they've done it and uh, they know it back to front and they've thought about all these things so which is very interesting okay so here we are here's the safe and as you can see it's only been here uh, two weeks and it's already getting more dust on it so at the moment the lock is off the bolts can move this is our footprint for our lock there's a footprint for either the other box or another lock we can close it we can open it that's good. Now this installation is extremely tricky. I have to use one of these big things. One screwdriver to put all this back. I'm going to disconnect my cable here by pushing that back black lever down. I'm remembering the spot it's the outer one. And the first thing I need to do is feed this cable through. Just push that through there. A little twist, make sure it centers. This will be the first time this uh, this lock has, well this safe has actually been lockable. Now I just need to pull that cable through without wrecking it, so just bit by bit by bit, and I'll even cable tie it all together. Now we want this dialer to be nice and secure, but these screws here are adjustable depending on the latex and all the rest. Two of them go into the hole and then we push it down to achieve that locked in type of feel. So I'm just going to tuck that in there, give it a push down, check how loose it is, too loose, give it a little nip up, and give this one a little nip up. We don't want to jag that cable. Okay, give it a shake now. It feels tighter, but I like it a little bit more tighter than that. Really squeeze that silicon in there. So I'm putting the cable into the middle section so it's not going to get pinched anywhere. Ugh, and now that's on tight. That's good. Okay, so here's our three screws, M6. Here they are here. So the lock basically goes in this position, so we put the lock into the locked position, the safe into the locked position. We plug our cable back in. And from there we need to uh, put this onto here. So there's a little area there for the cable to come through. And I want to keep that all nice because I don't want the cable to be pinched. Screws. These ones here, you can see they've actually been Loctited, and I'll be doing that later on when I when I clean up the safe because we've still got dust and things there. So I'll be cleaning them down, degreasing them, re-greasing them. Just got to find one of the one of the holes and making sure that we don't pinch that cable. Just those three screws, making sure that cable's not pinched, which it isn't. This is the time that pull tie comes in handy just to secure this cable. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck that cable in out of the way for now. And I'm going to test it with the door open, with our code. And look at that. Working. Testing it again. Okay. It's working good. Now, 
that lock doesn't work, the cable doesn't work, or something goes wrong, we have to drill this. So this is a moment of truth. And that's working. Let's try our second code. Working. Locks. Okay, now let's get creative, set the time delay. Position 9, zero, 01, zero, 05. Zero, 01, zero, 05. Okay, let's test it now. The user 1 code, and we're in time delay. It's started to beep now, so I can enter in my code. The door is still locked. And time delay is done. Okay, so was it worthwhile saving that lock? Uh, yes, because it's a, a B series lock. It's got a lot of functions, it's got time delay. The keypad, there's really nothing wrong with it. It's a little old. The lock itself too, I don't see anything really wrong with that apart from the stickers. I did open it up and check it out and void my warranty, but you know what? It only cost me 50 something bucks to reset and now I'm pretty much right to go. The cables and all the rest of it I was happy with. So as far as buying a whole new safe lock, I think this was a better option. Okay, thanks for watching.